Brazil. I hope you're training your ass up. Hey, Dominique Brazil, ask for this. I didn't go see him, he seeked me. So if it comes, it comes. This is a brutal sport. This is not a gentleman's sport. I keep saying this is not a gentleman's sport. We don't ask to hit each other in the face, but we does in a way. And if you can ask any doctor around the world, he'll tell you the head is not meant to be hit. Anybody can go. And on this particular time, we have bad blood against each other. This is the only sport where you can kill a man and get paid for it at the same time. It's legal. So why not use my right? To this day! Man, 18 gonna be judgment. And indeed, Judgment Day is here. Mr. Cleveland, we are finally here. We are finally here. We have been waiting since December 1st to cover this man. The most dangerous man with the most dangerous right hand. Mr. Deontay, the Bronze Bomber Wilder. This is our first of many coverages on this man, Mr. Cleveland. And our first victim to cover is Dominic Brazil. This man is going to feast on Dominic Brazil. But before we get into that, my brother, this is Chuck PCville's finest, not the FL podcast number 19. And I'm with my right hand man from the land, Mr. Carl Cleveland. How you doing, my friend? I'm good, fam. Like I say, clocked another day at the gig. Got the weekend off. Got a great, great boxing. Got an event. We got a spectacle. We got something we anticipating. Shouldn't it's not what we wanted. It's supposed to be Tyson Fury, but you know what happened. You know, he got scared of that 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 right hand left hook combo that, that you see in my profile picture. And he ran a Bob Aaron for protection. So so now we got Deontay Wilder fighting my man. Don, he ain't my man, but Dominic Brazil corny ass. Eh, we gonna see. We gonna talk about what's gonna happen in that fight. I'm good though, Chuck. You know I love when the show writes itself <laughs> because you just mentioned you just mentioned Bob Arum and Tyson Fury. And I want to talk about Bob Arum. So they had a recent interview with Bob Arum after Tyson Fury's press conference in which no one gave a fuck about, by the way. OK. And Bob was asked about the statements that Deontay Wilder had made, you know, as far as getting funeral arrangements together for Mr. Dominic Brazil. And. Um, Bob has said, he said, well. I, I, I got to say, I, I, I like Deontay Wilder. I, I, I really, really like Deontay Wilder. But I have to say that there is no room for things like that in this sport. Yes, it is indeed a combat sport. But we do not need to hear things like that. We are not trying to kill anybody. And once again, I like Deontay Wilder. I think he's a great fighter. But there's no room for things like that in this sport. Well, let me highlight at you, Bob. Let me talk to you, Bob. This man, Deontay Wilder, is in the position of bringing stardom back to boxing. And how do you do that, Bob? Knockouts, okay? I got an analogy, Mr. Cleveland. How about a football analogy? You know, you could kick field goals and you could win a game that way. But nothing beats the excitement of a touchdown. Sure, you can go in the ring and you can have a good boxing fight for 12 rounds and get the win. That's cool. But nothing beats the excitement of seeing a man's eyes roll to the back of his head and falling flat down to the canvas Do to a knockout. So Bob, why don't you just sit back and soak in your Epsom salt 
get you a nice cold beverage of Metamucil and sit back and enjoy what this man has to offer to the sport of boxing. And at the end of the day, Bob, it ain't nothing that this man said that's illegal. And it ain't nothing that the man is going to do in the ring Saturday night that's going to be illegal. So just sit back and enjoy the show, Bob. And whatever happens to Brazil happens to Brazil. Mr. Cleveland, you want to chime in on this? Man, look, I I'm really tired uh, of this PC and this selective outrage that the people got with what Deontay Wilder said, man. Sonny Liston said crazy shit. Mike Tyson said all type of crazy stuff. Mike Tyson said he wanted to uh, uh, eat Lennox Lewis' heart, stomp on his testicles, and like eat his babies or something like that, man. That that was some crazy shit. But ain't nobody take Mike. Ain't no all. Oh, there's no place in boxing for this. You never heard nobody saying that. People was talking about how crazy Mike was. But they didn't actually believe Mike Tyson was going to do those things. The problem they have with Deontay Wilder is they've seen his power. They've seen Deontay Wilder knock somebody unconscious and in the hospital bed with a neck brace. They've seen Deontay Wilder hit somebody so hard they have a seizure in the damn ring and, and legs start shaking like he's doing the hokey pokey. They've seen that. So when Deontay Wilder says he want a body on his resume, and in the make homeboys funeral arrangements, they believe him. That's the issue that they got with Deontay Wilder, man. They believe him. They know he's capable of doing it. They've seen that right hand. They've seen that sledgehammer, man. They didn't seen that 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 Thor hammer that he got in his right hand. And, and they know what it's capable of. I, I just don't like the selective outrage because, man. Like you said, if it happens, it happens. Deontay Wilder ain't going in there looking to kill this dude. He going in there looking to win this fight. He's probably going to do that. But this is selling the fight. Come on, man. Come on. And they got that background. And they got that history. That's all this is. So I'm tired of the people with this selective outrage, like I said, man. It's fake outrage. Oh, my God. I'm so shocked. Man, get the fuck out of here. Yeah, I'm with you. And, and while we're still on the subject of Bob Arum and Tyson Fury, now I want to talk about Fury. Um, I, 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 and I called this. I called this. I think I called this one on the knock the F out after part. No, 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 no. It, it wasn't an after party show. It was one of the older ones where, where we were on video. But I had said that Tyson Fury would get this Dillian White fight. I said that he would end up fighting Dillian White because that's like the only bigger name, not big name, but bigger name that he that that he that he can fight. Because he damn sure ain't fighting Deontay Wilder again. I don't give a damn what anybody says. He ain't fighting him again. Now he might fight Anthony Joshua because Joshua doesn't have any options. But yeah, he's gonna fight Dillian White. But here's the thing. He doesn't want it to be for the lineal title. He wants it to be for the gimmick belt, the WBC diamond belt. That's the gimmick belt, man. You know, but the thing is, Mr. Cleveland, he just wants some hardware. He just wants some hardware. He wants it where he can go to a negotiation table with a belt that he can lay down on the table. That's all this is about, man. He'll end up being Dillian White. He'll get that gimmick belt. And then he'll go around bragging about how he the number one heavyweight with a gimmick diamond title. Anything you want to talk about as far as Fury? Man, he disappointed me not taking a rematch. I really feel like fuck Tyson Fury until he fights Deontay Wilder. Number one heavyweight would have rematched him because technically that fight was a draw. And the last thing I remember is seeing you get Knocked unconscious and the referee breaking your ass, giving you a break. That's what I remember, man. Dude's eyes, like, if you look at my, my profile picture now, his eyes are closed. Deontay Wilder completely knocked him out. He got lucky that the referee kept counting. 
when the referee sees you down on your back and he counts to four or he counts to three and he sees there's no movement, your eyes is closed, four, five, he waves it off. This dude gave Tyson Fury all the opportunity in the world. And, and not only that, Deontay Wilder was fair in the negotiations. He said 50-50, put it on the table, said, there you go, man. And he still ran away, didn't want to fight him. Man, he felt that sledgehammer. So, fuck Tyson Fury, man. I, don't, I really don't care what he does until he rematches Wilder, man. He can fight him a bum. He, man, I, I, I'd be surprised if he fights Dillian White, man. I know that that could happen. Because people, they look like, man, to be honest with you, it look like they really trying to ice out Anthony Joshua because of all that big talk he was doing. But uh, I, 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 I really don't care about Tyson Fury. Fucking. Well, alrighty then. Another news, Mr. Cleveland. See, I, I I tell you, we've been going back and forth with these confirmations of these boxing fights. Do right after we talked about Pac Man and Keith Thurman, the very next night, the very next night, they end up confirming the fight. So now it's been confirmed. Now, people, it's been confirmed by Fox. Now, damn it, it don't get no more official than that. So the fight is on, okay? The fight is on for July 20th. Manny Pac-Man, Pacquiao, going up against Keith, one time Thurman. And I am very, very intrigued by this fight. I can't wait for it, man. And, and, and I got to give a hand clap to Keith. Keith, you did a hell of a lot of politicking, a hell of a lot of politicking for this fight. And I don't know, Mr. Cleveland. I don't know, man. Keith, Keith, Keith is something else. You don't think that he put on that bad seventh round on purpose, did you, man, to kind of lure him in? Man, no, uh, that was his first fight back. That was ring rust. He looked bad, though, man. He looked very bad. I'm going to put it to you like this. If he looks like that versus Peck, he is not going to get the decision. He, he won't win. I don't – I really – I hope Keith take this serious – I really hope he does, and I hope he stay in shape after the fight so we can get the rest of the fights that we want. But, man, this dude, man, he a, he a used car salesman, man. He a kind artist. He came in talking that I ain't got, I got to owe, and I ain't afraid to let it go. Now nah, he a businessman. Now nah, he a, well, he got to earn something. Yeah, now he, he need a belt. I, he was the dude saying that he was going to fight the up-and-coming contenders and not do what was done to him. Like you said, he pocket ticked his way into a damn Manny Pacquiao fight. Manny Pacquiao don't want to fight no Bud Crawford. He don't want to fight no Spence. He look at Keith Thurman like he the weakest of the champions. So, of course, he's going to try to fight Keith Thurman, man. I, I get it. I get it. But as long as the winner is fighting good competition, I'll be able to live with it, man. I know Keith better be, he better be serious, though, man. Your boy Ponytail, man. Ponytail, he getting knocked out messing with Pacquiao, man. You better be serious. Man, Keith gonna take all that goddamn hair, man. Gonna twist that shit up, man. Throw them motherfucking gloves on. Get the throw on that Pac-Man motherfucking ass, man. Dude, I can't we'll wait see. to come to that motherfucking fight, man. We'll see, man. <laughs> we'll see. He gonna get twisted up, man, and it's going down, man. We'll see, man. Hopefully, Ponytail show up, man. Oh, no, hopefully one time will show up. Because I ain't seen one time in a minute. I done seen the Ponytail. Well, um, another fight. Another fight that I'm intrigued by. And we got rumblings of this now. The Battle of the Garcias. We're going to probably have Danny Garcia... Going up against Mikey Garcia. And I want to see what Mikey has left. And I, and I, oh, we, dude, I'm telling you, we was talking about this. We had said that Mikey could have good, good fights against the likes of like a Danny Garcia. And this is, that's exactly the person I wanted him to fight. A person like a Danny Garcia. And we're finally going to get this. And, I mean, Mikey's probably going to be the underdog in this fight. But, man, these people doing the same damn thing 
that J-Rock told these people not to do. Mikey lost that fight against Errol. And now everybody making it seem like Mikey has been. Everybody talk about, oh, Danny about to fuck him up. Danny about to do this. Are you kidding me, man? You going to just write Mikey off like that now, huh? Because he went up against a juggernaut in Errol Spence. This is the same damn thing that J-Rock was just talking about last week. And that's why I got Mikey going in that motherfucker and winning that fight against Danny. Dude, Mikey can box, man. Ain't no, I couldn't believe how many people was writing off Mikey in this fight. You, you, you kind of want to chime in on that? That was crazy to me. Well, look, man, I, I think if the best Mikey Garcia shows up, he can win because he can outbox Danny Garcia for 12 rounds. What I'm interested in to see, I'll be able to see a little bit once I see like sparring, if I can see some sparring before he fights or even how he looks in a workout to an extent. I want to see what that beating from Earl took out of him, man. If if he's still the normal Mikey Garcia, he can outbox Danny, man. But if he's lost a step, if he can't uh, react in enough time, if he can't counter, if his reflexes are gone, man, then Danny will hit him with some shit and knock him out, man. he hit catch him with a left hook and, and stagger him and have him hurt. I... Yeah he, yeah, he better look out for that overhand right by Danny. I am interested to see how Mikey, how how he reacts and how he comes back from that beating he took, man. So that that's that's an interesting fight. Um, it ain't nothing I'm gonna pay for. I keep it one hundred with you. So if that's on pay per view, Carl Cleveland ain't paying for it. Dude, dude, they 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 talking pay per view too. Oh yeah, that I ain't paying for that. I let y'all know up front. That's not no that that's. Sometimes, man, boxing is backward because that's not no fight that I'm going to pay 75 bucks for, 100 bucks for. That's a fight that should be on the PBC Fox, PBC Showtime. That's a free TV boxing match that could possibly do some good ratings when you got the Mexican versus the Puerto Rican, especially because that's, if they smart, that's the angle they going to push because they didn't always had that Mexico Puerto Rican rivalry, man. That's that would be perfect. That would be perfect. But we'll see if they'll push it. Cause you know, Mikey is Mexican American, and you know, my man Danny Garcia is Puerto Rican. I don't know if he was born in Philly. He might be Puerto Rican American, man. So that that is something else that is going to really drive the ratings for this. I think they just they just played this one wrong, man. Especially if they put this on pay per view. Yeah, I definitely got to agree with that. And, you know, I want to give an honorable mention and a big shout out to uh, Billy Joe Saunders and Gary Russell Jr. They also have fights tomorrow night. Um, Billy Joe Saunders, he's fighting across the pond. You know, he got a fight over there. And Gary Russell Jr. is on the undercard of this Deontay Wilder fight. Gary Russell Jr. is a beast, man. Gary Russell Jr. is an animal. Um, One of the longest reigning champions we got out here. As a matter of fact, Mr. Cleveland, I think he had his belt longer than Wilder had his WC, WBC belt. So, I mean, Gary Russell Jr. out here doing the damn thing. I just would like to see him go against better opposition. That's all. Anything you want to talk about as far as Gary Russell Jr., Mr. Khalil? Uh Fuck Billy Joe Saunders. Uh, Gary Russell Jr., man, I can't I can't really blame him because he's been calling out the dudes. They ain't want to fight him, man. He's been calling out the Leo Santa Cruz's and the Carl Framptons. They do not want to fight this dude. And I understand because he has very fast hands, decent defense, man, good reflexes, decent pop, man. He's an all-around good fighter, man. Um, I want to see him fight those guys as well, but I can't get mad at him if they don't want to fight him, man, because that's what it is. Now they, they didn't have they sip of courage and, and they acting like and they talking like they'll fight him. We'll see, man. But Jaden had all this time. They done fought each other a bunch of times. And Leo Santa Cruz or Carl Frampton, none of them dudes at 126 been trying to fight my man Gary Russell Jr., man. So I'm not mad at him for that. I hope he gets those fights. 
he, he should win this Saturday. That that that'll be a good look for him. I rocks for him. And uh we will get on to this main event, man. Yes, we will. So let's get it started. Let's talk about these fighters, man. Let's talk about it, man. Let, and you know what, Mr. Cleveland? Let's start with the victim. Let's start with the victim. Saturday night's victim is a man by the name of Dominic Brazil. He has a record of 21 wins, one loss with 18 knockouts. And the only loss he had was due to the one heavyweight fighter that we choose not to cover on this podcast. We only cover real fighters. We don't cover cowards. I'm sorry, UK. I'm sorry. But nonetheless, after that loss, Dominic Brazil goes on to win three in a row. Getting a couple knockouts in the Barclays Center where he's fighting Saturday night. So Mr. Cleveland, he's probably feeling a little lucky in the Barclays Center. He's smelling himself. He's feeling himself in that Barclays Center. It's almost like home to the old Brazil now. Well, you Mr. Know, Lewis used to say skinning and grinning, skinning and grinning. Yeah, so, 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 and, 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 and let's do this. Let's do this. I mean, let, let, let's let give credit where credit is due because we are really burying this guy. All right. Uh, Dominic Brazil, he's an Olympian. He, 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 he's athletic. He, he fights with heart. Um, Dominic Brazil got a good right hand. Okay. Cause I need a little help because I, I can't think of anything else to say about Dominic Brazil. He's an out um, sure cast off. I mean, you, you, I mean, is there anything else you want to add? I, I, I go ahead. I mean, I mean, I mean, yeah, that's, Pretty much been his career highlight being I'll be sure stunt double. So yeah, those 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 pretty much are the list of his accolades. Um, that's what's going to be on his tombstone Saturday. He lied a man who was I'll be sure's stunt double. He was a cornball dude. He needed an Urban Dictionary to understand Deontay Wilder apparently. I can't stand this guy. I can't be honest. I got to be honest with you, man. I really can't stand this dude, man. He he is a cornball. He is everything wrong with these dudes today. Man. He's a fucking cornball. He's a fucking cornball. He's a fucking cornball. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I, I really... He got a smug, elitist attitude, man, that I can't stand. He acts as if he can't understand the words that Deontay Wilder speaks. I have no problem understanding what he what he says, what he means. I, I really don't like that. He's trying to downplay his intelligence, all because he's upset about the incident that took place back in the uh on the Deontay Wilder undercard when he's fighting Gerald Washington in Alabama, if I'm not mistaken. He was talking. Some some hot, hot, hot cash money bullshit around Wilder's people. Wilder, he found out. They had words. It escalated. He wanted to say that Wilder talking about he was going to kill his kids and in front of him and beat him up. And basically, man, Dominic Brazil sued Wilder over that garbage. From what I was, from what was told to me, and from what I found out, man, he had some words. I was told that Marcellus whooped his ass. Marcellus Wilder is uh, Deontay Wilder's younger brother. Then Deontay talked, found out that he was was talking that cash money bullshit. They met each other. Uh, uh, some, some it escalated, but. According to Deontay Wilder, his people was trying to make sure that his kids wasn't hurt or and nothing like that, man. So my man Dominic Brazil got embarrassed in front of his family, basically. And he's looking for some revenge, man. He's looking for some revenge. I think that dude is not going to uh fight on the up and up. I think Dominic Punk ass Brazil is going to find a, a slick way out this fight because he knows he's going to get knocked out. He knows it, Chuck. He knows he's going to get knocked out. 
He know it, man. But he got to take that James Ellsworth mentality. Any any man with two hands has a fighting chance. He know it, man. He, he talked all that bullshit. He can't go nowhere now. Dominic Brazil, y'all going to fight in the ring. And none of that other bullshit matter. Only thing that matters is when you get hit with that one-two and Deontay Wilder catch you with a fatality, you know he's going to catch him with that MK11 fatality, man. He's going to catch him with that right hand. His head going to go rolling across that ring. It's going to be over with. Sorry, man. I don't see it no other way. I don't see how it's going to end no other way. But Dominic Brazil leaving. Oh, yeah. Uh, and for all the real boxing fans out there, man, you'll know where the whole... <laughs> He's a fucking cornball! <laughs> you know where that came from, man. That's for the real boxing fans out there. But now let's talk about the real reason why we're here. To talk about the most dangerous man with the most dangerous right hand. The bronze bomber, what they like to call him in New York, the Bronx bomber. The WBC heavyweight champion, Deontay Wilder. This man comes in with 41 fights. 40 and 0 with one draw. And he wouldn't have had the goddamn draw if the referee knew how to do a damn 10 count. Okay? You're absolutely right, fam. He wouldn't have had that. All right? But anyway. <laughs> 39 knockouts. That's a pretty fucking high ratio, isn't it, Mr. Cleveland? I ain't that damn good in math, but that's about 90 percent something. That's a high ass ratio. Yes, it is. About 94, right. 95. Yeah, it's in that range. This motherfucker is dangerous. This ain't no fluke bullshit. This boy is legit, man. Mr. Cleveland, I have to thank you for presenting this motherfucker to me. The moment I laid eyes on Deontay Wilder, and Mr. Cleveland, you know I got an eye for talent. I knew it was something special about this motherfucker. I have seen the heavyweights, all of them, but I have never seen any heavyweight do the shit that Deontay Wilder is doing. That's why they hate on Wilder. That's why people like Tyson and Foreman and all these other greats got something to say when it comes to Deontay Wilder. And you know something? The proof is in the pudding. And I'm going to prove it. I'm going to make each and every one of y'all a believer here. And kind of refresh your memory. All right. He ain't new to it. He true to it. Let's pay respect. To all the fallen victims. That have fallen. To that right hand. They go. Saranara. Dead. Bonus noches. Mr. Cleveland. Ethan Cox. Dead. Shedden Gray. Dead. Richard Green. Dead. Joseph Rabbit. Double dead. Charles Brown. Dead. Kelsey Arnold. Dead. Travis Allen. Oh, he was really dead. Jerry Vaughn. Dead. Ty Cobb. Oh, he did. Alvaro Morales. Oh, man, you know he did. Dustin Nichols. Oh, yeah, with a name like that, dead. Shannon Cardle. Come on, man, he dead. Harold, whatever his last name is. You can't even pronounce his last name. You know his ass is dead. It, it, it don't even matter. R.I.P. on the tombstone. That, that's what's on it. Dan, Danny Sheenan. Dead, man. DeAndre Ibron. Uh, yeah, uh-huh, dead. Reggie Pinna. Uh-huh, 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 dead. Damon Reed. Oh, yeah, he did. Dominic Alexander. Uh, yo, man, Dominic. He did. Daniel Coda. 
Oh, and I was a good dude, man. He didn't have to go out like that. He did. David Long. Oh, yeah. He did. Marlon Hayes. Oh, man. Hayes, man. Yeah, he did. Jesse Altman's. Yeah. He's a goner. Owen Beck. Another one bites the dust. Kirkson Manswell. <sighs> Six feet and under. Damon McCreary. Bit the bucket. Kelvin Price. Pushing up daisies. Matthew Greer. Head knocked out. Ollie Harrison. Man. <laughs> Dead. Somebody from another country whose name I can't pronounce. It's probably the dude that he hit him so hard, he had a seizure in the ring. So I know he did. Nikolai Furtha. Dead. Malik Scott. Man, how he did that brother, man. That was black on black crime. Jason Gavin. Whew. <laughs> he did. Bermaine Stavern. Not the first time, but the second time. Man, oh man. Put that dude on the cross. He was out. My man hit him so hard in the front of the head. He said he got hit in the back of the head. He punched him so hard, his fist went through his cranium, came out of the backside. That's how hard he got hit. He's still in the air somewhere. Eric Molina. Oh, yeah. He, he's gone. Johan Duhapas. R.I.P., brother. Arthur Spitzka. Oh, man, put him in a neck brace, put him in the hospital, had him unconscious, man, drooling. Oh, my God, man. Yeah, man. It was, ooh, 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 that was bad business right there, man. That, ooh, that, ooh, 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 ooh. That was a bad one. Chris Ariola. Oh, man, now, you know what? I thought he was going to survive. He died, too, though. Gerald Washington, more black on black crime. I know, right? It ain't right, man. It ain't right. And, and one of my favorites, Luis King Kong Ortiz. Man, oh man. He had to beat that man down into submission. That was a tough one. He put up a fight. Man, once they taste that right hand, they all go down. He went night-night. He took a dirt nap. I put the blanket over top of him and, and put a pillow under his face, man. And his last victim, Tyson Fury, in which he didn't knock out and got the draw on. But as you can see, Mr. Cleveland's thumbnail picture, he ate the goddamn canvas. Oh, he Spoiler. died, man. He died. But it was divine intervention that brought him back to life. So, so one thing's for sure. One thing's for sure. Each and every person that this man has rocked up against he has dropped. And it won't be no different with Dominic Brazil. He's going to kill Brazil. This is a bad motherfucker, y'all. I don't know in how many languages or how many ways I can make you a believer in this man. This man ain't nothing to fuck with. And before we get into the predictions of this, and it's pretty self-explanatory, Mr. Cleveland, do you have any last words for Brazil? Uh, RIP, man. It's going to be third round. No, you know what? I'll give him fourth round. It's going to be a fourth round fatality by Deontay Wilder, man. I think uh, my man is going to get hit with some stiff jabs to the face, to the belly. He's going to lower them hands. He's going to get hit with a right hand. He's going to get back up. He's going to get hit with another right hand. He's going to get back up. Then Deontay Wilder is going to give him that real Alabama slammer. Because, you know, the first two was just toying with him. Like, man, seeing if you could take it. What's up, baby? Then he gonna catch him with that one good one. Knock him out, man. 
It's going to be all she wrote. He going to go back to being the cornball ass dude, man. He going to knock the cornball out of Dominic Brazil Saturday night. Yeah. Let, let, come on, y'all. Come on, y'all. Listen. I'm thinking Deontay Wilder is going to remain Stavern part two this food. I think he going to – now, 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 listen. Is either, this going to either play out two ways. This is this is what I'm thinking that's going to happen. I'm thinking he going to go out there, man, and blitz this motherfucker, man, and get him the fuck out of here in the first round. If that doesn't happen, it's been a long three-month training camp. Deontay Wilder said he kind of wants to display some things. And he said that the, that Dominic Brazil is going to be his guinea pig. So he might go out there, man, showcase some skills. It's been a long training camp, man. Just want to show the people that, you know, I just don't have the right hand. So he might toy around with Brazil for the first couple of rounds. Then go for the kill in round three. I definitely don't. I don't see this fight going over three rounds. I either got Deontay Wilder blitzing this fool and getting him out of here like he did Stavern in part two or playing with him a little bit and getting him out of here by round three. So, there you have it. Mr. Cleveland, we put another one in the bag. Knock the F out podcast number 19 is in the books and I can't wait. Now is the time, y'all. Get prepared for this. I highly recommend you don't miss this decapitation. Find any way, any way you can to watch this. I usually don't put shit out like this, but listen to me. You're going to have a lot of people live streaming this on YouTube. So for the ones who might not have your your proper streaming devices or if you don't have the cable subscriptions, don't worry. YouTube got you. Somebody's going to live stream this. Just go to YouTube, people. There's no reason why anybody cannot watch this fight. This is one you want to see, especially if you are a fan of seeing somebody get knocked the fuck out. I'm telling you, we got Mike Tyson as the poster child for this podcast, but it might have to change to Deontay Wilder. This is the knockout king, y'all. Bomb and squad! He, and Yes, and he's going up against a bum, okay? You got the bomb against a bum, all right? Weigh it out. This is a no-brainer. Landslide victory. Easy victory. Show up money. Easy work. And that's a Chuck P. Guarantee. Check us out at WrestlingWrestling.com. Follow me on Twitter at ChuckP216 and keep a leg up on everything I got in store for you for the future. Shout out to my boy Andre the Great. Damn good job on the intro, brother. Subscribe to his channel, subscribe to mine, and we will be back for the after party Sunday. You know how we get down. Oh, and it's going to be a party. You don't want to miss this after party. Trust me. <laughs> Chuck PCville's finest, Mr. Carl Cleveland. We'll see y'all Sunday, man. Enjoy the fight. Enjoy that knockout, baby. It's going down. Bob Squad!
not only did he come by himself, but he came with about 20 individuals. So he came with a purpose. And he, 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 he tried to intimidate you. He tried to intimidate me, definitely, without a doubt. I, you know, and, and mind you, I'm there with my wife in hand and my kids in hand. We're going down for a dinner after a meal. And I'm sure you've been there several times where you just want to take your team down and, and rejoice in the win. And that was my mindset. And, and here I have Johnson Waller. And